Just coming. Yes. How many Stephen ministers are there right now? What are there? Five of us? Uh -huh. Carolyn and Joe are the only ones that aren't here yet. So there's five of us. And Carolyn uh, Schnell yeah. and Joanne Beef. Uh, well, uh, Joanne Beef is still on our education committee. And uh, and Joe Short Reed. And we have, um, right now, we have three, four care, care receivers, too. Thanks for asking, Lydia. Yeah. I'm still hearing I have a dance. I It is. You know, it's funny. The songs we're writing now, the new ones, there's way more repetition. You used to write like four verses and everything. People want to hear the chorus, but yeah. not too many verses. So yeah. We flip flop, cover it, ready to release it. So, yeah. If people want to sing, they kind of want to listen to that. Oh, yeah. After they hear it once, we kind of want to listen to it. Yeah. Feel it. Repetition. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the The box. So as we go, write down and make the and then because this will be fairly crisp. Then we'll do question and answer. We like questions. We have um, Jim Ehrlichman and maybe Susie. I'm not sure they don't have their video on, but they've just signed in on Zoom. And they're muted. Uh, and they're muted. So, Jim, if you're trying to talk, unmute yourself. They do that on CNN. Well, and it's good if you, yes. when you enter the room, you're muted. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Everybody's getting yeah. used to the etiquette, right? Zoom is a little bit else. Yes. Yes. Right. That's true. Yeah. We wanted to welcome you all to our Hello. our um, end of life decisions that the Stephen Minnes came together for. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. We thank Mary Jo for being our tech support mm -hmm. today. Don't thank me yet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, one of our goals is to begin on time and uh, make sure that everyone has your handout, which is the state copy of the health directive, as well as a feedback form for, um, afterwards. Um, if you want to take this time, if you haven't already, to introduce yourself to the person next to you, maybe it's a stranger you don't know, and that's why we kind of hand it out. Name tags as well. Oh, Welcome. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Also with you. Receive knowledge, hope, and comfort as we gather here today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And today our topic is medical decisions. And Paul, our Stephen minister for the past five years, is going to be presenting the information that you have in front of you. And hopefully for this presentation, he's gonna answer questions that you have. So please hold them till the end. Um, Paul also has experience as a hospice nurse. So that gives him a great deal of insight into this topic. So without further ado, Paul Chopin. Thank you, Connie. Good morning, everybody. Afternoon is morning for Bridge Test News. Are we glad it's not raining? Yeah. Morning. Yeah. a blessed, beautiful, sunny day out there. As you can see from our title slide, for those of you who have driven by lately, I took this picture before the tree trimming was done. But uh, I waited to take the picture until I got to the car before the church says all are welcome. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're saying to everyone who's here today. Welcome. And welcome to everybody who drops in online. Our topic for today is important, as I've learned as a hospice nurse, because do you want to think behind? That's not even a cliche, right? You want to think ahead, right? So that's kind of what... Our theme is, as we'll go through the presentations, including this one, which is on the California Advanced Healthcare Directive form, which is quite amazing. And I'll talk about it as we go through. But this is something that everyone can use. It's amazing. So the first thing we want to do then, if you can go to our next slide, please. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, see? There we go. <laughs> if you have a space bar, you just press space bar. Oh, maybe it's not on slides right now. Here we go. So let's face it, we're here today because we're living, but someday the end of our journey comes and there's a lot of things that are important to think about ahead of time that bring you peace when it's getting closer to your end. So let's have a couple of scripture passages here to share with you. Um, first one, um, and you're welcome to read scripture along with me. If you're not, you're welcome to just enjoy the thoughts. Um, Genesis 2 7 reads, we go, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man and women became a living being. That part's amazing, right? Everybody celebrates when babies born. That's a real blessing, isn't it? But what I've learned in hospice is it's a rainbow. And we celebrate the beginning of the rainbow. And without fear through our faith, we can also celebrate the end of our rainbow. It's the same rainbow. And so the second part of the scripture speaks to when it's time to say goodbye. And it says, from Ecclesiastes 3.19, for the fates of both men and beasts are the same. As one dies, so dies the other. They all have the same breath. That's what life is. All go to one place, all come from dust, and all return to dust. From, from once we draw the phrase ashes to ashes, but to dust, there's other passages as well. But the point being, there's nothing to fear. I, I The first person I ever held hands with as they were passing, was my grandma on my mom's side. And my mom was holding her hand on the other side of the bed, and I was holding grandma's hand. And we said the names of everyone in the family. We said, Tracy loves you. Mary loves you. Grandma got to hear that at the end. And it wasn't, I didn't know at the time, 
foreshadowing that one day I'd go to nursing school and become a hospice nurse. But the first hospice assignment I got was an emergency. They called me out of the blue. They said, man, we're nursing. We're supposed to have a round clock care. So when I got there, the pain forward of grandma showing me you can die with grace is something that I take with these hands to every one of the people that I go home. And so these scripture passages make a lot of sense when you're reading the Bible. It, it makes you feel fulfilled, really, as you read scripture. But this is a tough but essential time. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry, I told you to go thank you. Oh, we got an owl here. Good yeah, that's a good one. Sorry, we're not worried about technical uh, yeah, we will get there. There it is. There it is. Um, all right, so this is the thing. What we're talking about today is a tough but essential topic. If you think ahead as we're about to go through, it makes everything else a lot smoother when you get closer to the life. Um, and we see um, Luke 18:29, and it's truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or a wife, or brothers or parents or children, for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times more in this age and what in the age to come, eternal life. That's why we can go through these things and through the series that comes up. They're really interesting to do people with this little blue main badge on. You're always welcome to come up and talk to us. And we'll have a lot of other presentations come up that are really important. But strengthened and comforted by our faith that there is life after this life to Christ. Well, today let's take a look at how to prepare for the transition and help the next generation thrive. As you know, our theme this year is generation to generation. And I'm telling you, if we do this ahead of time, we're doing the next generation a huge favor, right? Um, so we can go ahead to the next slide then. And I'll, I'll also point out for you, and this is with good friend Larry's help when we were preparing this first presentation. The, the highlighted blue words are the gist of the slide. So if you can't read the whole thing, you're like, ah, oh, man, that's a lot of reading for something. Just look at the blue ones and tell you kind of the topic. So, I can in here. so today is about protecting your medical decision rights. Do you want anyone else making your healthcare decisions but you? Especially when you get to the end and you may have had a stroke or some event that may now not have legal capacity to make those decisions anymore. And we'll explain as we go why this is so important to think about. Ecclesiastes seven eleven says wisdom like an inheritance is good, and it benefits those who see the sun, which is you today. For wisdom, like money, is a shelter, and the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of its owner. And that's the point today. We're going to preserve the part of your life that concerns your intentions regarding end of life. And if I'm a little bouncy, it's because we had a great service earlier and we were dancing in front of God. So I know the topic is sobering and you know solemn, but as we discuss this, when I'm saying EOL, it's just because everything's an acronym. Don't worry about that. By stating things in advance, that's how we can preserve the part of life that concerns our intention. Let's see how. Um, so under California law, and this is good, our state is very into protecting us as citizens from things that can go wrong that they can address. Under California law, your intent is paramount when it comes to carrying out your wishes regarding your own medical decisions. It's akin to a will regarding your health, right, and how you want to have the end part of life. So the who, when, and how for such decisions is best set out when, now, right now, you have been given a handout and the folks who are online will be making this available to me now or in the future. But right now is the point I'm going to make these decisions. And if for any reason you're unable to make decisions in the future due to death, incapacity, or other circumstances, Forethought is the key. You have the right 
you have the right, the constitutional right in this state to give instructions about your own health care. Or FICE, the California <laughs> servers. You can also vote, and that's a really important thing today, name someone else to make health care decisions for you. Someone you don't trust to get out of your attention? No. You're going to choose someone who you trust to talk with you now and learn with your intentions or carry them out if you can't make those decisions anymore. Um, and so the California Advanced Healthcare Directive, I'm not making an athlete for this one. It sounds too close to ADHC. Okay. It's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. here we go. Uh, acronym crazy. I'll just say healthcare directive. So we referring to is the handout you got today. That allows us to accomplish either or both of these goals. That's what's so cool about this morning. You'll see as we go that you can designate someone to just start having the right to make your decision today. Maybe you're a busy executive. Got too much to think about. So you just want to hand that off to someone so you know they're ready, or it can be at your end of life. This form tells both. So let's go on to the next slide here, please. The next slide. Oh, you're there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I. Oh no, we love anticipation. Where is he? You said plan ahead. I was planning ahead. Well done, Mary Jo. See with the with the program. That's great. Uh, now you can go along as we go. I have specifically got a separate column here, and I'll tell you ahead of time where we're going in the form from place to place because in our preparation we found where are we in the form? Again, one of the main questions we wanted to ask. So um, this document was created by, check this out, California Office of the Attorney General. This is a big deal. Our vice president used to be in that position person 100 feet away from the presidency was part of this during her era putting this together. So it's really fun to have something that shows what our tax dollars actually do something useful. <laughs> All right, and, and the cool part about it is, obviously you're the printed out form right now, but I will be providing a link. It's a bottom of the slide. See the green button I made for you? If you pull this off the internet, all you do is click on that, it goes straight to where this form is for you. I mean, we see it online. What's really cool is all the fields where you need to put in information, they're great. You can type in. When you're done, you can save it. Finally, no one is thinking ahead. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> so, uh, not right now. We've got to be a little more than that. We don't know if their website's going to open up. I've been told that they're going to keep time in mind. But, you know, you can do it at home. Okay, fill the fields you can save it, but the OAG, one more after journal, created this form so that all people in our state and any other states where we figured out we've got a good idea, um, including those who may not have the benefit of an attorney or want to pay for it for that matter, um, can prepare such a document. It's that straightforward the way it's written. You can tell exactly what you want to do as you go along the form. And you can specify your intentions because the whole form is written in understandable terms. Say three legally is not good enough. They made this understandable. Um, you can insert more though than just yeses and noes. Think about it. Are there parts of your plans for your end of life that take a little more of a sentence than just saying yes or no? You'll find that there are. And there's a place for that form because people have specific wishes. For example, um, sometimes when I'm helping folks in hospice, there are other faiths, for instance, if they're Muslim, and they want their bed oriented towards men. So we honor all that. You can put that in this form, right? It's very important that people get to express your intentions. And um, if you want, I'm not saying don't, you could also have your attorney help you complete this form. That doesn't mean we're saying don't look at an attorney. If that helps you get things and ensure you cover them. The form covers all the bases. That's the point. They put about everything you need to do about the request ahead of time. Um, but the important thing about this, of course, is to do it in advance. And Mary Jo was very good about that. So we'll go ahead to the next slide then. And um, this one's on designating your healthcare agent. Not a secret agent. You know, that would be fun. It's a healthcare agent. And right now we're going to go to part one of your form. Part one of the healthcare directive. 
you know, this has benefited me to help their agent. And you designate a person to act as your power of attorney. How many people have heard the phrase power of attorney before? Pretty many of us. And that's why we're having this presentation to you, too, because the power of attorney everyone's used to hearing about is, is a durable power of attorney, which will be discussed in another presentation in the very soon. Prepares the, uh, or presents the legal question that come out of his life. Um, but for us today, this is a different kind of agent. This one, and we'll make it real clear, is your power of attorney for health care only. It's really smart. You're not mixing a bunch of roles under one person. Um, so they understand that's their only role. Now we've got a definition there. It's uh, page two, part one, section 1.1 1 .1 says that the term agent means the person you entrust with the legal right to make health care care decisions for you in the event you become incapable of making your own decision. Or I said before, if you want to just pass it up now, the person you entrust in number two um, to make health care decisions for you. That can start right now. We've already discussed everything you all done, and, but you want to entrust them with that right away. They make that point in the uh, forum so we'll let you know that's an option. So we can go to the next slide, please. Oh, oh, it'll be there. It'll be there. Um, yeah, we can do this on the fly. Yeah, we can do this. Thank you. Um, okay, so what do we know about human relations? Best buddy, whoever it is that you chose to be your agent for health care decisions. You're good friends today, right? It isn't just that you passed before you, you might get mad at each other. They are talking to me, you know how life is. So do we want to appoint only one agent? Just count on they'll be around and our end of life. Yeah. So you'll notice that it's uh, the person that you can choose. There's also a space, page two, part one, section 1.1. 1 .1. If you look down, it says option. But it's really kind of important that you do this. Um, the person you choose next to your agent, First, they must also agree in advance to do it. So you want to make sure you ask them if they can agree. Uh, but also, you can designate an alternate agent. In fact, there's spaces for two, and you really want to cover your bases. So you just have those alternative agents who also need to agree ahead of time to make these decisions for you so they're ready. So it's wise to make more than one of the agent designations. Just in case your first choice, as they say, is not willing, able, or available to make these decisions. We don't have to change the life. How about the next slide? Thank you. Okay, so this one's not on the forum. This is just important. It shows you why we're talking about this forum today. When we're near the end of life, many of us may be in uh, assisted care or in. A uh, skilled nursing facility or getting home care with a nurse coming in. And under those circumstances, because you're entrusting basically your whole existence to these people that are helping you, is it a good idea to have some of a financial reason to, for instance, keep you alive longer if you wanted to pass when you naturally die? No, it's the same thing with wills, right? You, you're, you don't want to have someone witnessing your will. When you get to the end of it, who also takes under the will? They, you know, like, yeah, sure, have to sue. Uh, <laughs> but um, the point, point, point is undue influence is a risk. We're all trusting. Thank you for coming here today. You're trusting me to give you this information. Trust is a big thing. But California is this law is designed to protect you from undue influence being exerted by you by someone who is currently responsible for your care. Your agent should not be an operator or employee of a community care facility where you're living or a residential care facility or a home care agency that's providing you with health care support. This is because such person who works in a facility or an agency that can provide home care could have what? Let's all say this together. A what? Conflict of interest. That's why we're here today, is to make sure that you're protected from anything like that because this form addresses that. 
the people who witness this for me and get started, you'll see, will not be the people currently providing the care. So we can go to the next slide, please. Oh, we're already there. This is great. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, this next part, we go, we're going to turn to page three, part two, section 2.1. Where it says instruction for healthcare and then end of life decisions. This is where we start getting into the meat of what this one can do for you. Medical decisions, and this is a good idea why you have an agent for this, can make decisions for you that can include whether or not to consent or abuse consent for any treatment, service, procedure for your physical or mental condition, because these are things that. As we know, for the end of life, people can have maybe some memory care they're perceiving because their memory is not what it's going to be used to. Also, they can select and discharge healthcare providers or institutions. Let me tell you, one of my very best friends, my girlfriend in college, her dad's 90 now. And he was in one facility that was really nice. You know, he'd look at Yelp, you get him in there, but find out after he's been there for six months, all of a sudden he's got pressure ulcers at the points where he lays there and doesn't move around at that staff job. So this person, who you made your agent, could look at a circumstance like that and say, should we just leave my good friend there with that kind of treatment? No, they will have the legal right to have you transferred to a different facility. This is really important. I see it all the time. You want good care. A person has to move every half hour so where the body starts reacting. Um, next is to uh, approve or disapprove diagnostic tests, tests, surgical procedures, and programs of med medication. That's a big deal, huh? You're just laying there thinking, oh, this is cool. I like, see the ocean, see the room, or whatever. But then they're like, yeah, let's have a surgery. And you're like, nine to five, you know. Surgery makes sense right now. I prefer to have just a comfortable EOL. So that's an important thing they can decide for you too. And also, and I realize this stuff is very serious because I see it every day. It's different when you get to the end of life than what you expect. And so this next one really kind of addresses that. Your agent can direct the provision, withholding, or withdrawal of nutrition, hydration. And all other forms of health care, including what? If you want to die naturally, what do you not want them to give you if you pass? CPR. That's right. So this form specifies that. And you'll see that for me, and a lot of people, it ends up making sense somewhere. Some people put it on their fridge, right? Um, or whatever. You really need a blue envelope with everything you need in one place, whether it's, and, and you'll find as you go, it isn't healthcare stuff, but I'll just mention this check me for what it's worth. You know how you have bank accounts where everything you've earned your whole life is? If you pass away and nobody knows which banks it was or what the account numbers were or the passwords to things, right? it's crazy to have this stuff in the document. Like I hope my house will get robbed and, and everything about me. But one of the most important things out of that, I've seen this is, if you are if you code at the hospital and you die and they don't have a DNR order, they will resuscitate you. They're required by law to. And then you're like, I didn't even want to do that. I'm ready to go to jail. So this is very important. Uh, and another five that your, your agent can say for you, and this one is really important, it's to provide or withhold pain medication. This is the thing, and you'll see as we talk about a little bit going on a little bit on your slide. Um, pain medication is part of how they ease the journey. You know this. You have friends who have dealt with this. Your doctor doesn't want you to suffer at the end. Your family doesn't want you to suffer. And the pain medication becomes part of what ushers that in. You know, grace and, and gently. So you need your agent to be able to make that decision for you. And last but not least, what do they have on their driver's license? You can donate or not donate what? Very good. Everything almost inside is useful for someone. So that's your call. 
That's one of the things. It's our sport. So that's really good to have there. Uh, so let's go ahead and wish you already had it here. Oh, good, good job for this. What quick coordination. Full and limited decision making, right? What if there's something you really want at the end, right? For instance, one of the things a lot of people like is if someone's having, I know something's in start, but when someone at the end is having what they call a death row, sounds a little bit like snoring, but like snoring from a horrible year. It's not as bad as it seems. The body is beginning to shut down. But what we do as hospice nurses, and I have the families join in on this, is we take softest, fluffiest squash plugs we can find, and we, we put them all in warm water, and we put a drop of usually lavender essential oil, and all the grandkids, and all the kids, and all the great grandkids, even, they give grandma or grandpa or great grandma or grandpa a facial. And then you lay a cloth across their forehead and lay a cloth across their neck. Death rattle goes away. I've seen this so many times, it's stunning. I didn't know it was where I went to nursing school, so I got to talk this up. But that's the kind of thing, back to the form, that you can specify. What is that? That if you wanted that, but you never happened to mention it to your agent, how are they going to know? Right? So in page three, part two, sections 2.1 to 2.3, it shows you that what you can grant your agent full power. If you already communicate them everything you want to know, they will want to know later. Like, that's fine. In that case, you don't have to fill out part two. But if you want to make specific healthcare provisions and decisions, hey, provisions for a decision, thanks, that was all right. Um, by yourself in part two, 2.1, you can specify if you want or do not want your life to be prolonged. What did we learn about when COVID hit? Our word, what's that machine? Resuscitators, right? Ventilators is another view word for it, same thing. It's miserable to be on this program. It's not gentle, it's literally breathing for you. And so if you wanted to pass without that kind of experience, if you say it in this part two, 2.1 2 here, you can say, I don't want to be kept alive by artificial means. And I can tell you, if you don't specify this, 10, 20, 30 years, you might be on artificial breathing, which means they're also feeding you probably through the G2. So these are good things to think ahead of. In part two, 2.2, 2, you can specify you want pay, pay relief. And what they say is, and it's a hallelujah, I think, really, because it's something they do that I agree with is when they give you typically morphine at the very end of your life, it's to ease the pain, but it also hastens your demise. And that's not said in a bad way. What you see, have any of you been with relatives when they passed away? All right, then you know. You want them to feel what? Loved? You want them to feel like their life was impactful for the community or the church. And what else do you want them to know that they're not able to, not what? Alone, right? Well, yeah, I think we'll make that choice. Yeah. So this is part of the things that you can specify as we go. Now, the last one, two more people we'll talk about here. This is the fun one, right? This, this is your blank one. Any other thing? You want going on. Like for me, you know, in Peanuts, when short thing, da, 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 thing it, that instantly lifts my heart. Although I have to say today, dancing, I think, that. God, I think that's now in the mix too. You can literally do something with that. You can have a soundtrack for, for saying goodbye. And I'm telling you, you guys know. Anybody know? Okay. How many senses do we have that we're aware of? Some people have six sense or ESP, I suppose. Yeah. But what order it goes in as each of those things fails, the last one that works typically is what? That's why we're saying, Grandma, you know, Susie loves you. The rest of the family loves you. And you might want, if you like, Beethoven, right? And that's your segue to the hereafter. So this is stuff you can specify there. 
So we'll discuss more I'll, I'll gain some time back on that. We'll check. Um, okay, and we won't agree long with me, but this one, and I'll say this, I had a different scripture passage originally, but they thought it was too far voting. So I, I fixed it on the fly. And so we have Romans 12, 6. Can you please read this one with me? This is a quick one. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If it is given, let us give thanks. This is amazing, right? We're all like, hey, we're all second half of life. Who wants our lives, right? But they have a long utility beyond when we pass away. And so as we see this part of form, it's on page four, part three of this healthcare directive. Of course, it's option. Well, of course, you need to make this choice. But if you want to make this provision, you want it to say something different than what's on your driver's license, those got to be saying the same thing. Because they're going to have your wallet likely in the end of life. And they're also going to have this healthcare directive. What do they do if they're not in consonance? That becomes a question that more than likely they would have said what's on your driver's license, I suppose, because you presented it to the government and your friends. But in any event, it's important that the decision made, needs to be made in advance. Are you aware of this? Anybody ever seen Grey's Anatomy? I'm sure they've had multiple shows on this. Um, time is of the essence when you pass. Some of the parts of this wonderful body God's given us have minutes. They need to harvest these things. I like that word because it sounds like you're taking something and growing from it. And you are. As crazy as it is, as goofy as we all are, as far as how our health is different than each of us, our heart could save someone else's life. Our kidneys could save someone else's life. So they have to get those things, those all in a severe body. They need to get as soon as possible. So that will be speedy because we have to Yes, okay. Designating our EOL physician. All right, page four, part four, lets you designate a specific physician for EOL care. Sometimes people don't have the greatest relationship with their primary care doctor, or you know, like whatever. You might have another physician, you know, who want, you want the comfort of their being in charge of your care at the end. So that's what we can specify in page four, part four there. And this does not have to be the doctor who's the primary care physician, but um, they need to agree to have to do it. And what's the important thing? If you're a to hospital, and I've seen this because I work with doctors walking around who don't have a badge, and they're like, I'm here to help someone. So the hospital's like, well, you don't have affiliation rights. So if you choose someone other than your primary care physician, you need to make sure they set up affiliation with that, with that institution. So, hey, we're making good progress. There we go. Um, so I got one little rhyme for you, excuse me, but I gotta write some hats on. Making the directive legally effective. <laughs> <laughs> Page five, part five. To be legally effective, this healthcare directive must be, can I get a witness? Can I get another one? Two witnesses, right? Okay, and it makes sense. They have to be followed by them. Let's see what that means a little later. Or notarized. This thing is crazy. The same person who notarized your, your mortgage. You know. they, could, they could be notarizing your end of life. Oh, here, here. But again, this is by qualifying. We mean, can any of these witnesses be, be people who work for the place of creating care for us? Living? No. Your home care? No. They can't be part of it. They can't be employees of any of those agencies. And at least one of your witnesses has to declare under section 5.4, what I mentioned earlier, they can't benefit under your will. So this is good thinking ahead, so you just want to do influence. <laughs> but what conflict of interest? Well said. Very good. Now, after this point has been witnessed or notarized, who are you going to give a comment to? Any ideas? You get to like yourself. Everybody. Everybody gets a comment. Everybody, right? It's like, oh, everybody gets a comment. You know, I wish. There's no keys on your seat. Um, but your family, your doctor, the hospital, your care seat, your editor, your home care facility. So real quickly, let's go to the next slide and look at the special witness requirement. Again, folks, this is California thinking ahead for you. You're in one of those facilities where you're receiving care. 
Who is your advocate? Who will make sure something's moving to you and that you're not getting pressure ulcers? It isn't anyone necessarily on the staff. You call someone this old version of English, the ombudsman. California has a provision for this. Um, and that's the special what this requirement is. Um, if you're in a facility that this applies, part six applies to you. If you're not, and you're not receiving home care, then you can skip part six. But your advocate, your patient advocate, needs to also be a witness to your health care director so they can make sure you don't have very important. And they're there to ensure that you know what your rights are and your ELL intentions are accurately expressed. So don't be shy, be, be feisty. Okay, so we can go to our next slide. And guess what, folks? Okay. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. Okay. Um, I think that's the. Uh, Okay. Yeah, we're done with the forum. Hallelujah. Right? Okay. All right. Well, I'm being told to rush. So, um, what it comes down to is at the end of life, you're going to have either, um, you can go to the next slide, please. Palliative care or hospice care. The main differentiator is that the emphasis on palliative care is simply management along with pain relief when you have a life expectancy of more than six months. Hospice care is when you have a terminal condition and you'll be expected by your doctor to pass away within six months or less. And I will mention for the multidisciplinary team, you'll see in hospice care. It is, these are people that come in that were part of your curative care. Curative care is ended in hospice. You have your EOL physician, pastors, your minister, hospice nurses, social workers, case managers, spiritual counselors, comfort care professionals, and bereavement counselors. All this is part of our end of life. And we have, can we go past the first one? I think we did. Can we go to the next one, please? All right. Did we go past the merry-go-round earlier? And I didn't yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're going to keep that both in this one. And the whole point was the breath of life comment earlier that we read from scripture was about just telling you, congratulations. That's a lot of information. You're all champions. And you did it. Now to celebrate life, I'm going to do this once with you. Can everybody breathe in deeply slow with me? We'll breathe out slowly. One more time, breathe in slowly. You know, too, breathe out slowly. Do you feel that calm? You can go to the next slide and I will actually be done. Okay. So, towards peace in Jesus Christ, providing in advance for essential EOL healthcare decisions needs to be made in harmony with your true intentions, and that can help you have more peaceful experience at the end of life. So Mark 24 and 39, let's see it's out. With that breathing we just did, did you feel how calming it is when you breathe out? This is amazing that this was written thousands of years ago and it still applies in the 21st century. And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, be still. And the wind died down and became perfectly calm. That's what we want for our end of life as well, folks. And this will help you do it. So if anybody has any questions. Amen. <laughs> yes, please. I have a question about primary, uh, primary care physicians. Um, all hospitals have hospitalists now. So your primary doctor is not ever going to come see you in the hospital. So is there any point of putting that in? Can we leave it blank? I think you still want to designate who you are running the show, even if it's where people are in a hospital. 
There's a lot of us. I know I'm going to be, you know, kicking and screaming to the end. I'm not leaving my house wherever <laughs> I live. That's where I'm going to pass there. Yeah. And for a lot of folks, that's what they would prefer. So, in that case, like you said, you might have a doctor that might not be going to the hospital over the flares up again, something like that. Um, but if you're in your home, you can still have a doctor come in there, like we control the environment better. Um, good question. That is because we could find out if you can leave it blank, like you suggested. Because there are parts of the form that you can leave blank. So, good question. Someone else? You got a um, comment in the Zoom that says, I think what is important for everyone to realize is that this can happen at any time. And it is important to discuss these things so that family members can know. That's from um, Michelle Hawk. Yes. Yes, that's a very good point. And that's why I know it's goofy. I mean, it's hanging by my front door, right? They come in together, the paramedics. On the way out, we're going to notice it's really big letters in case of emergency. It'd be pretty hard not to notice, right? Or Joanne has this one little thing. What was that called? The link? The your vial of life. Your vial of life. You have that with you now? Getting more of these, but several of them, you can get one of these from Aging and Independent Services. And we're all more. They're passed it around among folks. And what it is really is it's a like a slip or a kind of, I use it in a lot of ways. It's the same thing. All those forms are important in your life. Go in that one place, and it even has a big bag on the back to keep on your fridge. So what do you have in your, what is what is in that, Joanne? Oh, uh, it turns out, I hadn't looked at this as closely as I thought. <laughs> Sharps gave me this a while back, and it's called Physician's Order for Life-Sustaining Treatment. Mm -hmm. And it and it does in small print. It says this is not the same as an advanced directive, but it has the for the physicians more choices to click off in a box, and um, and they have even a trial period of CPR, yes, but only for this long kind of thing. And what's the name of that organization that makes that? The other thing is the Aging and Independent Services, and you can Google it, and they they really are wonderful advisors and very gentle, and they can send you when the it information. It's um it is for only a well, it's about reporting adult abuse, just and it's for all services for seniors. Or yeah. 211 is services for everybody. Yeah, you could probably find it under 211. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's all 211. I had a situation that I had to use it, and um, they answered aging and independent. So, oh. yeah. They there just have this many resources for approaching end of life. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to make a statement if I could. Go uh, Having recently been on a ventilator after surgery, I was told ahead of time not to worry about it and how, when they take it out, et cetera. And it, it is not to be feared as part of treatment as much as it sounds like maybe you wouldn't want to be on it forever and ever. Right. I was speaking more of some like yeah, in this day and age, when it's just COVID and stuff, sometimes it's just temporarily health breathing, and they know how to keep that from. They didn't even hurt my saying. Hey. Hey. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, and that's a good point too. That even within the two three years now, pandemic, which is also pandemic instead, is we've evolved. At the beginning of it, they were telling people if you had COVID and you were on a ventilator, that you would probably get that. So that was before they had no vaccines and booster. Now the effects are better, are not instantly, you know, a death sentence. So I'm glad that you mentioned that because we didn't mean to apply that it makes you suffer in the end. It's just not like regular breathing when you do it. Go ahead. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, is it wise? If you're letting your children make the decision, your adult children, 
is it wise to have all of them come to a consensus rather than just one? Yeah. Yes. Assuming your children like you. I'll hold that. Actually, this is probably a kind of everyone. This is what Joy was talking about. They look like. They're picking your question. And they have an income number here, but it's aging and independent services. Um, yes, this is an issue, right? Maybe our kids don't even get along. So you really want that whole ruckus affecting what your life's going to be? Well, I'm assuming you, you know your kids and you know the relationships they mm -hmm. have. Is it still, and especially if they're out of state? Yeah. Uh, is it wise? I mean, does it work? I don't know if anybody's done yeah, that. Yeah, I, I just want to just want to share because I did work in a hospital. You should have one person that is your spokesperson. Your children can they can confer. Or have a like spokesperson. You have to have one as a spokesperson. Okay. Is that the agent we're talking about in the health directive? Then is that one person, whether it's a child or a spouse or? Okay. It's and typically a bit more useful to have it uh, be. A family member, if you have someone else you trust. Some of these things are going to take some independence of assertiveness that you don't necessarily want to fall into family. Um, and you'll have consulted with this person and made crystal clear what you want, and they'll stick to it. And it, it actually lifts quite a burden off others. And what you're bringing up, D, is um, I think maybe our last presentation is going to be called Family Dynamics and and talk more about the palliative care and the hospice care and some other options that we have to help families like get along. <laughs> but, you know, that kind of a thing. So. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I just wanted to add a little bit to this. Um, this is why it's so important to do this advanced medical care directive form or other forms akin to this way before you get to that crisis. Then you can talk it over with your family or your, your children, whoever you feel that you want to be responsible for the decision making. And then you won't be so emotional and you won't be in that point where you have to make that decision now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. I don't want to depend on my kids to take a vote as to how they're going to treat it. <laughs> oh, so the purpose of that, that care directive is your wishes. And so you put down your wishes and you select an agent who will honor your wishes. Now, if that happens to be nobody in your family, that's fine. Find the person that will work to your wishes. If it's somebody in your family, then, and of course, you know your family, then uh, <laughs> pick the one, and then the others don't have to get involved, and you've already told them, you don't have to get involved. So the big key is communication, and communicating your wishes, and making sure that those around you are not going to interfere. You know, I've been that agent twice, <laughs> and I was the agent. I wasn't going to be appointed, so it was my job to take care of it. Just what I was going to say. And it's a lot of responsibility, isn't it? So that's good. Maybe. Yeah, I just, I just want to clarify. So if you have done a, an advanced healthcare directive before, like a lot of hospitals want you to use their, to use their form or whatever. My question is, if you were to redo this, would this supersede what you have done? So if I heard you saying it's like for California, you know, it would go anywhere. I guess I just want clarification about that. Okay, here's the thing. This is from personal experience. As with many of us, I had a major surgery and you're gonna go under anesthesia for that. And so I used this form itself. I personally used this. And it's it's fascinating because once they get it, then they put it in a bunch of boxes and have to go look for it and scan it in, right? So when I had uh, other circumstances recently to be in the hospital, you know, they want your insurance card and everything. And they asked me, do you have an advanced healthcare director? So I said, yeah, it's already in your system. 
So it is one of those things that you definitely think ahead of because I knew to them ahead of time. And if you had a prior one, but you want this one to supersede a prior one, then I think you would have to, I would say you could put into that other wishes thing, literally right. This advanced healthcare directive supersedes all prior dated healthcare directives. If it's there, and you'll put that same, your lawyer probably will put that same thing in your will, so they know that it's incorporating by reference this advanced healthcare directive. It's a good point, right? Hopefully we're living as we are long lives, so you have multiple different things to walk around. Because we were talking about that in, in our group when we were planning for it, to go back and revisit it, to make sure that everything is how you wanted it like five years ago. But Larry has a point about uh, the legal part of it. Well, I, I, yeah, I did some uh, investigation on uh, the valid directive is one with the most recent date. On it. Okay, but it has to be executed. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so two two witnesses are all yeah. see everybody learn quick. That's exactly okay. it. so. If, yeah. if, if your concern is that there are multiple directives yeah. out there, if if the valid one is the one most recently executed, okay, and there's again it needs to be distributed. This is a good dialogue because because of your question, you mean. To me, what do you guys think? When the notary public does the jurat, they call it and notarizes the document, does it leave the date out? No. No, it's in there, right? And that's a legal stamping of that date that you were there, that it was you who intended this form to be effective. So I, even though the two witnesses thing, that's nice, I guess, but it's going to be considered irrefutable evidence of the date of it if it's a notary. So I think that one, based on this dialogue, it might make sense. Well, and like you said also, Janine, every healthcare uh, provider has, like, so this is the Kaiser one, you know, that I have. And so your health providers will all have their own, but that doesn't mean that you can't use this one. Yeah. You know, maybe you like this form better and it's more you know, easier to understand. That's part of my question, because a lot of times they say that they want you to use their form for a lot of reasons. Uh -huh. So that's a good but, thing to find out. But I was understanding you to say that this was created so that it would it would satisfy whatever all of the different requirements of an advanced health care mm -hmm. directive. And it's, it, it's a good point about all of this is, where can things become a mess after you pass with part of the probate, right? Everything gets messed up unless you had insurance, trust, and other mechanisms. But the part I like, I mean, at first, it seemed a little odd that the Office of the Attorney General of our state created this form. Well, why did they know? Because someone ripped off somebody <laughs> and took all their life savings, and there was a lawsuit. And then the, it, not just a lawsuit, but someone got charged with a crime. Right for stealing that money. Elder abuse is a thing now. They really protect us when they try to. So to your point, you know, the Office of Attorney General is more aware than anybody of all the different ways people can steal from us, right? So that's why they, everything that's a, a part of this form has been untold criminal prosecutions and probate courts saying someone's got to cover this. We keep getting these cases. It could have been covered with a form. So it's a good point. There's a lot of collective, I think, evolving representing that one form. And for me, and it's up to you, of course. But when I went in for surgery, this is the one I wanted. They have the wrong, but that's based on what hospitals they call risk management, you know. That's that's covering the hospital more than you. It doesn't mean they're hurting you, but this one is all about you. So I would highly recommend that you consider it. And of course, as Adam discussed earlier in the series, there's legal implications to everything we sign towards them the way. So consult the people you trust and to a certain extent, go with your heart. Carolyn, you had your hand up. Uh, yes, do you know if uh, if you do an advanced directive in one state, is it honored throughout? It has to be. 
There's no way they could deny it. There's no way. This, it, every part, everything turns on, you know, who brought the probate. It all turns on the intent, of, depending on what the person leaving it is. It could be to a trust or otherwise, but everybody wants to pile on. And it really ends up coming down to what the courts decided, and according to the forms say, what best shows the person's intent. And they're not going to sit there in another state saying, well, that's a California form. They're not going to, right? Because it's ultimately your, your rights as an American, right? The yeah. whole country wants to protect our intentions for end of life. So yeah. I would definitely. Joe, why don't you go ahead and finish yeah. with that? I, uh, we have a, a family member that's in the, in the hospital in, in the battle. And I'm thinking that they would probably not honor this because it's a California, because we've had insurmountable problems getting any kind of form for them to sign. And they don't seem to have a whole lot of uh, care, and they don't seem to follow a lot of uh, legal stuff. So, anyways, what I'm, so what I'm saying is, I think you need to really find out. Before Whatever you, you decide, decide that but that's something that that care of everything. Under legal yeah. matters. That might be coming in our next presentation. It's going to be uh, February 26th, and it'll be financial matters. And uh, Larry's son, Adam, is going to be our presenter. And um, so oh, that might be oh, something to bring up. I do financial. Adam's going to do legal. Oh, that's, that's right. That's, oh, he's doing yeah. legal next. No. No, we're doing financial, financial next time. But to this point, that's why one of the very first slides, I was like, this is for all health. And, you know, there's no way that any of us can sit there and say well, what's going to count in another state. What I would suggest is if you move to another state, check with their, doesn't have to be Office of Attorney General, but hire a lawyer, find out what's a legal form for those purposes there. I think what today is more about really is getting us to start thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. And doing and, it now. And this form is a way we can think ahead. Mm -hmm. So since I see it in your eyes that everybody gets it, this is cool. All right, I'm really glad that you joined us. Yes? Yes. Um, I use this form then it can I copy it to send copies or get copies to the various people? Yes, I in fact I do you guys have my phone here. You guys ever heard of Genius Scan? There's an app you can put on your phone. It's crazy cool. You hold your phone above it. And it orients it right, even if you have it sideways. And it's and you do it that with each page of the document. And at the end, you have an attachment that it's a PDF. So I sent to everyone, my hospital included, my doctors, everyone. I just sent it as an email attachment because there's no information in there that if some hacker grabbed it, it's gonna hurt you. It's your planning for end of life. Okay. I mean, so I'm not too concerned about HIPAA rights or anything. This one, because this is you sending it to your doctor. But it's a good point. And then, uh, does anybody ever use Dropbox? Doesn't that say that you want to use web, web based as well? Yeah. And, and the, the one that you can grab from the link, remember that green button? The one that you grab from there, you can download it. It's a fillable PDF. And when you save it, you have the PDF. The reason why I mentioned Genius Skin, when you download it and then put in those things, doesn't include all the signatures or notary and everything. Once you have it completely witnessed or notarized, that's when genius came. So we do this one close quarters. It, it, bing, bang, boom, it's done. So it's a good point. You want the paper, but then you're like, well, where do I keep this paper now? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to Joanne. We know we have. Thank you. Thank you all for coming in. If you would please complete the feedback form and hand it to one of the Stephen ministers, we'd appreciate it. And hope to see you next time with the financial matters that Larry is presenting on February 20th. And since we missed the first one with Melo Mario, let's all breathe in deep one more time. Breathe out slowly. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you, Paul. Wait. Yeah. At what age um, you, should you start thinking about building these? 25. Huh? 25. 25. 15. Seriously, 15. if you are an adult of your own agency with your own money and your own things, 
Because I can, I can live with a physical disability now. Yeah. Fine. Right. Sure. Okay. Okay. Last year, you know, when I was a baby, I was right. okay. I was in college. And I lived away from it. Last year, I had it again. Right. And then I started really a lot. Yeah. I had COVID. I also had COVID one. And I put this on. I'm looking at the I'm a dashi. 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 I'm a